up shortly. May 8th, King Vision and Showtime event television in association with the Mirage present live from the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, the WBC. Thank you. Tony TNT Tucker in quest of his second world title says this fight is not for the money. I want the recognition, the presence, the power. I want the title so bad I can taste it. Two years ago, his life spinning out of control. He sought help for the drug problem, found religion, settled down, got married. The world championship would certainly be the icing. And now to the champion, undefeated Lennox Lewis, the first English-born heavyweight champ in nearly a century, but with the exception of Ken Norton Lewis, the only heavyweight in the history of the WBC to be awarded the title without meeting and beating the previous champion. Does the convincing win over Razor Ruddick this past October prove that Lewis will dominate the division for years, or will he disappear like so many other European heavyweights? We may have a better grasp in the minutes ahead. Lennox Lewis looking almost preoccupied as he makes his way into the ring. Four and a half to one favorite. Born in London's East End of Jamaican parents. Moved to Canada at age 12. Now lives in London looking to prove to the world he is not just a paper champion since he never actually earned the title in the ring. Will Lewis jump on Tucker from Bell One as he did against Razor Ruddick? We'll know shortly. To the numerical breakdown, the tail of the tape. Lewis at 27, seven years younger than Tucker. After that, very balanced. The slight half-inch height advantage to Tucker. Both tipped the scales at 235. Bit surprising for Lewis. Advertised to be closer to 220. He felt he'd come in about 238. And the reach almost identical. And the WBC rules. Ten-point must system. Three judges scoring the fight. No standing eight count. No three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the last round. So as we close in on the main event, the WBC Heavyweight Championship, let's go back to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask you to rise for the singing of the national anthems. 
First on behalf of the defending champion, we present the national anthem of Great Britain. Join me in welcoming the internationally known cabaret performer. How about a hand for Stella Starr? present the national anthem of the United States, introducing to the microphone the outstanding singing star and Columbia recording artist, introducing Penny Ford. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last glimmer, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er oh, the ramparts we watch. Were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still. and boxing fans joining us around the world. The Mirage welcomes you to Las Vegas, Nevada as Don King Productions and King Vision in association with SET Pay-Per-View and The Mirage present the main event of this evening, a night that in part celebrates the 30-year anniversary of the WBC. This bout is sanctioned by the World Boxing Council President Jose Suleiman, Supervisor Edward Tungaraja. In conjunction with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the Chairman, Dr. Elias Ghanem, Commissioners, Dr. James Nave, Luther Mack, Bruce Lane, and Nat Karasali. The Chief Inspector is Mark Rettner. Physicians at ringside, Dr. Flip Pomansky, Dr. James Game, and Dr. Al Capanna. Timekeepers at the bell, also keeping count of the knockdowns, Al Bicek and Jane Broadfoot. Introducing the judges as appointed. At ringside, we have Harry Gibbs, 
Jerry Roth and Mickey Van. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening as we present the Star Spangled Glory. Ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime. The WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing the referee in charge of this bout, Joe Cortez. Introducing to you first, ladies and gentlemen, the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner. He is wearing red, white, and blue trunks and fighting out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. He weighed in at 235 pounds or 16 stone 11 pounds. His record, 48 wins, only one loss, one no contest with 39 big wins coming by way of knockout. Presenting the former IBF heavyweight champion of the world and the current number one contender by the WBC, known to the boxing world as the Big Oaks Thunder, the new Tony TNT Tucker. An opponent on my left fighting out of the red corner. He is wearing red trunks with black trim and hailing from London, England. He weighed in the same weight of 235 pounds, 16 stone, 11 pounds. His unblemished record includes 22 wins, no losses, 19 wins coming by way of knockout. He is the 1988 Olympic super heavyweight gold medalist and the first British heavyweight world champion of this century. Please welcome the defending WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. Once again, here's your referee in charge, Joe Cortez. Go take it, what's your luck? What's your luck? All right, Tony, Lennox. All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I'm here to enforce those rules from the state of Nevada in conjunction with the WBC. Give me a good, clean fight. Protect yourselves at all times. Shake hands. Good luck to both of you. Want to make note of the fact right here at the start, two judges from Great Britain right. raising right. some point. eyebrows, yet Tony Tucker uh, did not complain. Harry Gibbs and Bring Mickey point, Van right. from England, Jerry Roth out of Las Vegas. And here we go, round one scheduled for 12 for the WBC Heavyweight Championship. Tony Tucker, the challenger in the white trunks, Lennox Lewis, the champion in the red with the white and black trim. First thing you're struck with is the similarity of build and size. Looks like Tony's a little bit bigger, but they're both very big men. Tony, I think, is a little bigger up top. I think Lennox up to the top of his thighs is a little bigger, a little bigger in the calf. And again, as we th thought before, the chess, chess match ensues. Lennox Lewis told us he intends to be patient, that he'll move in if the opportunity presents itself. He did not indicate to us that he'll jump on Tucker from the start as he did against Ruddick, but don't rule it out. And there he goes with the right hand, but it missed, and a countering shot by Tony Tucker. Well, Tucker is not taking the attack to Lennox, that's for sure. He's, he thought at the beginning that he would try to push him back, and uh, he has not even tried it now. He's just watching Lennox and seeing what he's got. Tony's doing the traditional take your time, stay calm, move in easy. And Lennox Lewis wants to get this fight started. Yeah, but Tony's problem is he's, he's taking it too easy all his life. He's got to get a little salt and pepper in his life. If, if he's going to be calm and quiet, he's going to win this fight. And perhaps the most interesting revelation in our conversation with Tucker yesterday, when asked, what will you do if you have Lewis in trouble? He replied, stay patient. Yeah. That's been his, his trademark problem. He stays too patient. He doesn't take advantage and uh, finish it at the show like he should. But here, it's for the heavyweight title, and I think it'd be different if he gets him in trouble. Lennox in the meantime is smiling and looks like he's totally enjoying this in control of everything. Well, certainly during the interviews, I've never seen Tony Tucker more animated, more excited, more verbal. I mean, normally he's very calm, very, very 
very relaxing. Just sits back and just takes it easy. You almost have to pull questions, pull answers out of him from your questions. He was full of words and full of things to say. Well, Bobby, this is the final roundup. Tony Tucker. Trying to press the attack. We've got two huge and good athletes fighting for the heavyweight championship. Once again, landing two good shots to Tony Tucker instead of falling in and trying to pummel him in the corner, let him get out. So, you know, again, that lack of fire. Just a little cautious. And after all, this is the last round of Bobby. If he, if he finishes, if he doesn't win here, he's not going anywhere. Lennox can come back even if he loses and, and have a big, long career. So this guy's got to let it all out here, Bobby. He's got to do more than this. Well, yeah, Lennox is only 27. Tony's 34, so this could be the last to run. Yeah, I mean, you might, you might as well let it all hang out. You've got talent. you got boxing ability. You're big, and this is your chance. You might as well take advantage of it. So let's see if Tony does. Final seconds of the opening round. More of a feeling out process than anything. And that is it. That's the of the corner. Very indecisive first round. If anything, uh, uh, Tucker landed a couple of good shots and didn't fall. And let's listen to the corners. Double jab now, or single jab. And when you throw the jab, step in with the right hand. All right? Then show him something different with the left hook. Now let's do it right now. But you got to be, you can dictate this shit to him with your left jab. Even, look like even. You don't want to give it away. Look like it might have been even. Step it up a little more. Pick your pace up a little more. Pick it up a little more. Mouthpiece. Mouthpiece. Pick that. Hey, make it. Watch the right hand, Tony. Okay. Keep putting that right hand to the body like you're doing. And put the left hook behind it. Okay? Uh -huh. Good round, son. Okay? okay? All right. We're going to try to come out bombing, but you got, you, you got it under control. Okay, baby? Okay. Right off the bat, you see it in between the two corners. One says it was an even round. You know he lost it if, if they thought it was even. And the other one said a great round for us. So Tony figures he's got one in the kip, and so he has as far as I'm concerned. But it wasn't much to divide the two men. Round two, Tucker said, if it goes the distance, I'll win decisively. But uh, Lennox Lewis has other ideas. Well, I'll tell you, the round could have been an even round. Lennox came out using his jab, throwing a couple of right hands, pressed the attack, and then Tony turned tables a little bit, hit him with a couple of right hands, and they basically then leveled off and measured each other with no real action. Lewis predicted he'd knock out Tucker. Remember, also, we have two British judges here, about Bobby, and that changes your viewpoint a little bit. Lewis telling us he felt Tucker would come out weary of him, realizing he's a fast fighter, whereas Tucker is more methodical. Both men feigning, neither one going for the feint, but Lennox trying a little bit more exaggerated feint with his leg, nothing happened. Right now, Tony seems to be a little stronger, a little more forceful, and Lennox is a little tentative. We talked about being in the big show. Is the pressure getting to him? We're gonna find out as this fight unravels. And how he handles the, the distance as he comes, you, you pointed out before the show, if, if he gets hit, how does he react? What, what happens when it starts to go into six, seven, and eight? So, interesting fight shaping up here. Right now, nothing much has happened again. Second round, and it's uh, still two guys giving each other too much respect. Round two, halfway gone. Tony Tucker out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. 48 and one, one no contest with 39 knockouts. The only loss, 12 round decision to Mike Tyson in 87, losing the IBF heavyweight title. Now you hear some boo birds here at the Thomas and Max Center. They want more action. Well, Tony Tucker's used to that because he fights some god awfully dull fights, and he's got to pick this up if he's going to win a title or take it away from uh, Lennox Lewis. On the other hand, Lennox is fighting a very, very cautious, almost boring fight. I think one of those right hands in the first round in his corner kind of got his attention a little bit. He's being a little more careful than he was when he started the first round. Well, the start of this fight, certainly a vast difference from the Razor Attic fight back in October when Lewis finished him off early, his second. Oh, on the break, Lennox Lewis with a solid right. And he came up underneath something that's very smart that normally a fighter with more experience would think of. Coming up to 20 seconds remaining in the second. Well, he certainly caught Tony's attention with that one. 
That was the only good solid punch of this of that round. The only impressive one, and he hit it on just almost on the break. Tucker trying to line up the right with the left jab as we head for the bell. And that is it for round two. Right now, let's go over to Montel Williams. You know, I know this sounds a little crazy to come out of a fight, but tomorrow is Mother's Day, and here at the fight is Lennox Lewis's mother and also Tony Tucker's wife, who is now five months pregnant. Hopefully, maybe when the fight's over, one of their men or, or the victors will get to talk to them a little bit later. We'll try. I'll go back to you, Steve. All right, there is Lennox Lewis's mom, Montel Violet, Tony Tucker's wife, Kim, due in October. They already know it'll be a male. Tony told us, I would not push him to be a fighter. It takes too much from your life. But he said he wanted him to be a manager. The promoter would be good. Come back with that hook. Got it? Keep your hands a little bit high. You got a little too low on the baby. All right? Yours. But put that pressure on his ass. Back him up. Seconds out. Seconds out. Watch his head. Seconds out. Let's go. All right, Pepe Cordero, confident that he won that round. Because of that one good shot, I think he did because nothing was happening until then. Correa telling Lennox Lewis to knock him out. You're faster than him. Correa who guided the career of Sugar Ray Leonard for many years. Something else he told me was very important. Back him up, keep him going backwards. Don't let his weight come into you. Lennox in the attack for the first time. Oh, wait a minute. Get Jose. a little carried away here. Don't get involved, Jose. That was nothing for that. There was no reason for that. Joe Cortez, who refereed the Lewis Ruddick fight, having some words for Lennox. Well, Lennox has come to the to the uh, fight. He woke up it's the third round, and they've told him, "All right, go out and knock the guy out." And he's put on the first con concentrated attack we've seen of this fight. Tony still maintaining that stolid, quiet, placid behavior of his. He just doesn't get mad, and he doesn't come up with it. Lennox intent on landing that right hand. You can see it. You can see him measuring with it. He's almost telegraphing it a little bit. And Tony, he's watching him. He's king -like. Tony is just planted on the canvas. He is he is fighting from the uh, from the waist up. His, his legs are just planted there like two cement pilings. Tony Tucker, who did not look overly impressive his last few fights leading up to this Lennox Lewis bout, not showing the fire and desire so necessary. Couldn't finish people off when they had them in trouble. Meanwhile, Lennox Lewis appears to be looking for that one opening. That one moment to end it all. But even while he's looking, he's throwing punches, he's working, he's trying to make an opening. And Tony's not pushing it enough. He's not forcing any openings. He's not trying to force mistakes. And he's not throwing enough punches. Past the midway mark of round three. Well, it's hard to, to turn into an aggressive fighter when you've never been an aggressive fighter. And that, that of course, is, is uh, the wrap here. How can he all of a sudden turn himself around and be something he's not? He's, he's got to wait for the rounds to go by and then hope to be wearing out and frustrate Lennox Lewis. He may not be there in the, in the, in the last rounds to find out about that, however. Neither fighter ever knocked down. Lennox Lewis undefeated, 22-0, 19 knockouts. Meanwhile, Tony Tucker, 48-139 KO. Something that's important, too, with these men, they're both six foot five. They will nullify. Oh, look at that right Tucker, first time in his career. He says to Joe Cortez, I'm all right two times with under 30 seconds remaining in round three. Now well, that's that overhand right that got uh, Razor Ruddick in such trouble. And another one landed clean in the temple. Lewis trying to end it here in the third. Well, it's got, he's got uh, hardly any time. He should make it to the uh, to the corner. He doesn't look particularly hurt, Bobby. Well, what I was just going to say was they're both six foot five and they can nullify each other's power a little bit by leaning, but Tony's not leaning out of the way. And not Lewis really. ended the round with a solid right hand. A zinging right hand, which put him in a little bit of trouble. That right hand, which did raise a run again, is apparently a lethal weapon for Lennox Lewis. Twice he's landed it. Twice okay. he's had bad effect on Tony okay. Tucker. Let's listen. He's standing straight in front of this guy. Okay. It ain't doing nothing, all right? Okay. The guy's a counter punch with the right hand. Uh -huh. You waiting to throw one shot. Uh -huh. You waiting to counter with the right hand over the top. All right, let's keep an eye on that devastating right hand of Lennox Lewis. 
Uh, he, he's waiting. There it is. And it's, boy, it is telegraphed all the way around. It looked like the Brooklyn Bridge. It just came all the way over. Whoop. And well, there it went. Here it goes. You see him bottom. leaning. He leans and takes it right over the top. And again, Tucker isn't leaning, isn't rolling with the punches. He's just standing straight up. You'll see Lennox regularly lean back, but not here. Clean. It wasn't right, the London out. Bridge. You know. <laughs> it's in, uh, I think it's in Arizona. Now. At, at any rate, Tucker has now felt that zinging right. And let's see if it's, it spurs him to some action because he is now behind in this fight. And uh, he's felt the sting of that right hand. Let's see if it changes the way he fights. He better get a little bit more aggressive is what he better get. Round four, Tony Tucker going down for the first time in his career in the previous round. And Lennox Lewis again on the attack. You can see the fire that's been ignited in Lewis. He wants in. He wants to make a war out of this right now. Big right missing by Lewis. Now you see Tony leaning a lot, leaning on the rope, swinging, turning his shoulder, leaning, trying to nullify the power of that right hand. So he's fighting mostly a defensive fight instead of trying to fight some kind of offense. What he's just trying to do is keep this avalanche off of him, but if he doesn't fight offensively, he'll get knocked out by that avalanche. Stacey McKinley, Tony Tucker's trainer, told us that over the last couple of weeks, Tony Tucker had some surprises up his sleeve, some tricks for Lennox Lewis, like quicker footwork. But so far, we haven't seen any evidence of that. What's he going to do, kick him? <laughs> <laughs> quicker footwork. He looks like he screwed into the canvas there. He hasn't bounced once. He hasn't used his, his feet. He's been fighting from the top of the body up. I'm just reporting the facts. <laughs> I think pre-fight talk is just that, pre-fight talk. There's another decent right hand to the temple, but again, this time Tony rolled with it a little bit, leaned out of the way, trying to take some of the sting off it. But again, not offering the offense. That's what's going to win him the fight. If he's going to win it, he has to punch. See, because he's not moving, he throws a punch, and Lennox goes back. He doesn't follow it in. He just stays there, hammered into the canvas. He's got to follow it in. He's got to take the fight to Lennox Lewis. He, he, he just... He, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. That's the way he fights. That's the way he's been fighting for 10 years, and it ain't going to change tonight. Interesting with men this big, we haven't seen much body work. No one really wanted a chance going down into the big man's body either way. So that's something we should take a look at as, his round, as the rounds progress. Well, let me tell you, if Tony start, go, start going to the body, he's got to remember that's the way Razor Ruddick got knocked out. He went to the body and got zinged with the right hand right over the top. The British fans in the background beginning their soccer-like singing and chanting. About 2,000 Brits have invaded Las Vegas at about $1,500 a piece. That's what it cost them, or 700 pounds. And they are making their presence felt. So is Tony Tucker here in this instance. And he's trying to drag Lewis down with him. That's a slip, obviously. No knockdown with 10 seconds remaining in round four. A little encouragement, at least, for Tony Tucker. He tried it. He tried to go in and do something, at least something. And that is the end of round four. Crowd of about 12,000 unofficially here, and that includes celebrities Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman taking in the action here at the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas. Steve Albert, the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, and WBA Cruiserweight champion Bobby Chez on hand here at the Thomas and Mack Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada, watching the WBC Heavyweight Championship. Let's take a look at that slip, which was just that. It was a slip and see. And then the referee comes in and tries to hold him up by an arm. Kind of sloppy, wasn't it, Bobby? Well, he tried to slip a punch and then hold it to tie him uh, up hey, because uh, he was starting to get a little head of steam, Tony Tucker was, and hey, just got tangled. Hey, okay. Wipe it off, come on. Okay, está bien, está bien. Yes. That's it. All right. Take us out. Keep right, that pressure. I want him right down the next round. Now they better start telling Tony, you better start pressing the gas. You're falling way behind here. Tony Tucker was knocked down in the third round. We enter round five, scheduled for 12. Lennox Lewis moving forward, stalking, pounding, and pushing. Joe Cortez says, enough of that. 
horse is all business. He wants to take this guy out of here. He's, he's not loafing. He's not goofing around. He, he's just waiting for his opening. He's a very smart fighter, as we have seen all the way from the Olympics. He just waits for his time. When it's open, boy, he throws that thing in there, and that's usually a right hand. The only time either fighter is very effective is when they're going forward. Neither fighter fights well going backwards. And right now, the, the battle there is being won by Lennox Lewis. Yeah, he's just coming forward. Lewis, an excellent all-around athlete. A fullback in football, a power forward in basketball, but just found that he excelled in boxing. Calls himself a Jekyll and Hyde personality, a very mild-mannered, elegant gentleman outside the ring, but you can see what he's like in the ring. Now Lennox stepping in with a good hook to begin with, now two good jabs. He's stepping up the, uh, the firepower because he's narrowing down the distance between the two, and Tony should be firing off something. That's Tony should be... Absolutely defending his territory in there, and he's not. Tony's offering up a token jab, but he needs to put more together. Two, three jabs coming with a right hand, a hook. Do something to really get the momentum to swing in his favor. Yeah, and after the jab, follow him with a right hand, a hook. Move in with him. You know, I mean, move in. Get the fight going. Instead of stand back and look at your at, at your work. I mean, he's step in. There was a decent attempt at an overhand right, the same punch that had dropped him previously. It has been mostly Lennox Lewis. Tony Tucker just standing up. About a minute remaining in the fifth. Not much offense from Tucker, the challenger. Low blow warning. There's a right hand by Lewis. That left just missing. There were bad intentions on that hook. And Tony tried to slip in a nice little right hand there, missed, and he looked at the corner saying, well, I, get, I gave it a shot, but I missed. I mean, Tony's got to get some kind of hurt on Lennox Lewis, or else it's just going to be a field day here. You get the feeling that it's just a matter of time. Right off the top of Tucker's head there. As Lewis continues to measure Tucker out. There you go. There you go. He's, now he's going. Now, now Tony at least manifesting some aggression. The best action by Tucker at the bell of the fifth. Okay? Uh -huh. The man can't handle rhythm. Uh -huh. Keep moving your head like you're doing and get busy with your hands. Okay, baby? See, every time you get a press, this guy go on the shell and back up. Uh -huh. Keep breathing. You can't fight back up, okay? okay? Don't worry about the counter roll right hand right now, all right? Now listen. All right, let's take a look at Lewis's action. Now, the right hand on the top of the head, that was a punch that, that hit him before and dropped him, but it was too high. It was no good. Then, all of a sudden, Tucker comes alive, and he's just what we were saying. He's got to come two or three punches, step forward, step in there, carry the action to him. And he did that, but just as the bell, and then the bell sounded, he got in a couple of good little shots. Well, maybe it drew him to an even point in the round, I don't know. Yeah. Very close. Very close, but he's still way behind because of the knockdown and because he's been giving these rounds away. Round six. Tony Tucker coming up with some offense in the closing seconds of round five for the first time in the fight. This is for the WBC heavyweight title. In Tony's corner, they were telling him he can't take the movement. When you slip and you're weaving your head moving, he doesn't take to the angles very well. There's some footwork that we heard about. Yeah, we finally got off his planet on the, on the ground there and he started to move a little bit. If he could just carry that forward, and, you know, and he was doing good at the very end there. He was, that was an acceptable combat at the end by Tony Tucker. Can he pick up where he left off? So far not, but we're just seeing a lot of dancing around by Tucker. Lennox Lewis is missing a lot of right hands over the top. Tony's watching him, they're coming over the top. He needs to straighten it out a little bit. Maybe rip it up or go to the body move. Give him a new look. And the chance of Lewis from the crowd. Lewis looks like he's toying with Tucker. Well, has his got, hands down low. His hands are very low. I mean, he's almost just playing with him, like saying, you can't get to me. 
before I'm gone. See, all he does is step back a little bit and he's gone. And then he flicks out that jab that made contact to Tucker's forehead. Well, right now, Tony Tucker is not the more confident of the two. He's very pensive and he's not reacting extremely well when he could. He's got him backed up every now and then. He doesn't take charge and he really has opportunities. And now some <laughs> fancy footwork by Lewis. A little hip swivel movement too. A totally confident Lennox Lewis, the champion, having his way with Tony Tucker. But neither man impressing as, as a heavyweight champion. I mean, this is not an impressive performance by Lennox and certainly not by Tony Tucker. Right now, there's just two big heavyweights going through the motion here. And we, we're not seeing a great heavyweight championship fight at all. I think right now, the speed that Lennox Lewis ha possesses is taking probably the edge for him regularly because he's always there first. He's able to out lean Tony Tucker's slower jab. And, you know, he has a better attitude. He's coming forward more. He's pressing the fight. And that's definitely winning. Man. Definitely is. He's winning. He doesn't see any reason to change. If the opportunity comes, he'll drop him. And if not, he'll go like this for 12 rounds and win. But right now, Lewis is the lesser of the two evils. Under 20 seconds remaining in the sixth. Why was that? I mean, Cortez seems like he's so bored. He comes in every once in a while with an inappropriate warning. I mean, like, what was that? Break out, Break out, Break out. Final seconds of the sixth. Five. You're trying to clock this guy with your goddamn right hand in this now. Now, come on. Give me this damn double jab, and then you get the right hand down. Then you give me the hook left right hand. Mix your punches up. Back this piece of shit up. Back him up, baby. You got me? You don't have to lay back on him. All right, now. I want you... The later part of the round, you start busting that damn body. But do it off the jab. Do not do it off the jab. When you bust the body, get back out. You have to first. You have to first. Okay. Water. Come on. Come on. Do like I tell you. Okay. I always told you the right thing to do, right? Uh, Mike, come on. Don't wait till you make the counter punch. Okay. This is not this a counter punch fight. Relax, okay. relax. Chop it up and let out the stuff. You're doing what? Yeah. You're doing good, but you just ain't busy enough. Put, okay. put pressure on it. I believe that was the best assault of the night, but it was all verbal. And from the mouth of Pepe Correa in the Lennox Lewis corner, he said, double jab, back him up. And the rest was no. not for a family show. No, what he said that was right is this is not a counter punching fight. This is not a counter-punching fight. Don't keep waiting for the counter. Take command. And that's exactly correct. Pepe Correa is 100% on the money. He's, he's laying back here waiting for this guy to do something to counter-punch him. He'll be here all night. Well, let's see if Lewis heeds the advice and moves forward. And Ooh, there's nice. a good right hand by Lennox Lewis. I'll tell you what, that, that's a little bit difficult there because I think he was trying to throw a little hook. And Tony just leaned in and his hand went behind his head. Yeah, I don't think. As I say, Cortez getting a little bored and he gets in, he gets involved too much in the fight. Lewis here looking to extend his glove and Tucker refusing to touch. Right hand, but a glancing blow by Lewis. Something Pepper Curry also said to Lewis to dig up that body, start to break that body up. And I'll tell you what, he's going to the head, but he's not coming to the body at all. Wicked right hook by Lewis is another one, but back comes Tucker with a combination. Finally, some fight in Tucker. Beautiful right uppercut by Lewis there. Tucker showing a good chin. Yes, Lewis answering back after the combination by Tucker. Halfway through the seventh round. A lot of people didn't think it would be going this long. Now Tony putting his hands down, getting a little cocky. Or a little tired. Or a little frustrated. They could all apply. <laughs> all of the above. Well, the round started out good. We had some action. Tony Tucker getting hit with good shots, coming right back. Lennox Lewis again coming in. But again, they've kind of moved off to a little bit of a chess game. 
Well, you're used to more of an assault when, when you when you uh, saw the fights of Evander Holyfield or uh, uh, Reddick Bow. You see, I mean, these guys trade command. They're, they're champions up to now. Lennox Lewis has done very well, except in this fight, he hasn't. He's been looking at counterparts and making it a dull fight. Uh, instead of an exciting fight where he been, where he makes himself the champion of the world, he's just going on a so-so performance here. And right now, the most exciting thing is the chanting from the Brits in the crowd. Tony Tucker, the challenger, a disappointing for the most part. Final seconds of round seven. More of a slip. I don't think that was something that would be anybody should be concerned about. No, nothing. That was a slip. As we head for the bell. Baby, finish with your hook the next time. You got the guy ready to go, but you got to finish with your hook. Put more pressure on him with combinations, right? You are quicker than his. Don't you understand that you're quicker than his? You're much faster than his. Anything you want to do with the double jab, you can put the right hand here on the hook. You can do the double jab with the right hand here on the hook. And anytime you lay the jab way downstairs, come across his overhand right. Now I give you a lot, but I know you can take it. You never know. Uh, what well, little bit of action we saw there is Lewis trying to go to work. And there's a nice little right hand that bopped with not enough power to get him. But, you know, you, you, later in the round, Bobby. Well, later in the round, he's doing the same thing. He's whipping that right hand around. And, uh, again, I think he's taking a little power off. He's got to come up underneath. He tries to do that probably right off that bend there. But, again, Tony Tucker's not offering up enough, enough offense to combat any of the onslaught. Well, he's getting so far behind here. He's got to... He's got to do something offensively and it's got to be important and it's got to be significant or else this guy's just going to continue to Lennox will eat him up all night long and uh, he will retain his championship which he has with no trouble. Perhaps Pepe Correa is upset because his prediction of a fifth round knockout has long gone but urging Lewis on to throw combinations you're faster than Tucker double up on the jabs and he has been urging Lewis on in that fashion for the last few rounds. Just a few moments ago, you saw Lennox Lewis throw the jab, right hand to the body, come up with a hook, just what Pepe Correa asked of him. But again, it, will he keep doing it? Will he get, fall back into this routine of knowing that he can out jab Tucker and just lay back and hit him when he wants to? It just appears, I mean, it's pretty obvious that Tucker is his for the asking. But he is not taking advantage of the situation. Well, Tucker, on his part, is not seizing the situation and trying to take this heavyweight championship, which was pre presented to him as a gift. At the end of his life, boxing life, they have given him a golden opportunity, and he's not fighting like he appreciates it, because he should be walking, trying to walk right through Lennox Lewis. It's him or me. When you get to this stage in your life, let it all fly. Maybe he's waiting for those later rounds. If he is, it's a bad mistake, because he's getting way back on my card. Lennox Lewis right now can see Tony Tucker too easy, and by that I mean he knows what he's doing, he can see it ahead of time, and he's reacting to it appropriately. Tony Tucker valiant in defeat against Mike Tyson uh, six years ago when he fought Tyson, lost his decision, but fought it with a right hand that was broken in three places. But right now, having his difficulty with no physical handicap against the champion Lewis. See, now he lands a good jab. He doesn't follow it with anything. Oh, he walks into a right hand. Nice right hand uh, by Lennox Lewis. He walked into it because, because he was so lazy. Tony Tucker was so lazy throwing that jab. He, he, he got so uh, so convinced he could throw it without that right hand. Now he throws the right hand back, and he's fighting back. Now Maybe the best win. punch of the night by Tucker, that lunging right. Now combinations by Tucker. Now push him off and go right in with him. That's it. This is what now he's got to off. do. He's got to finish him off. Tony Tucker unloading. Tony Tucker to the head of Lewis, and Lewis just standing there. But he likes Lewis that. hurt. That is it. Is he hurt or is he is he setting a trap for him? That's something we got to know. I think he wanted a slugfest. Now he's got it. Lewis may have been playing possum. What a right hand by Lewis. Now that Tucker's hurt. Now that's heavyweight action, and Tucker's holding on. Tucker Tucker's may be hurt. ready to go. It's Tony Tucker. And he got a good elbow in the back of the head for his troubles, did Tony Tucker, but live, good action. And there's the bell. Tucker's out. Oh, look at his look, legs. Look at his legs. Oh, is he wobbly? He is out. That last shot just 
short circuited all those synapses in his brain. Well, he wanted action. He took it to him. He took his chance. Let's listen. You know what you did? You know what you did? Buddy, you ran them shots. How you feeling? He's ready. You ran them shots. Then you stop in front of the guy and relax. Okay? Got it? When he starts to find at you, reach out and hold him. Don't let him find you. Got it? Or step around. Don't be there. Look, relax. All right, let's take a look at where he got him in trouble now. Tucker's been fighting back all this time. Tucker was taking command and looking like he was going to take command of this whole fight. And like a fox, there was Lennox just waiting. So here Lennox, is the shot that I'm waiting for. I think Lennox was covering very well. He comes up out of that. And there you go again. He's coming up out of it. And this is a big right hand. He gets hit with an elbow in the back of the head. I mean, he's throwing whatever he can. He wants to win this. Well, he wants to keep this title, but win this impressive. And Bobby, again, what well, we keep saying, follow the fighter in with your punch. Don't just stand there. Round nine. Lewis all over Tucker, and Tucker goes down. The second knockdown. Tucker looking very weary. More than hurt, he looks weary. His legs aren't there. This fight is going to be very, very difficult to continue past the round. Yep. Lots of time remaining in the ninth round. Two and a half minutes. Lewis trying to end it right here. Oh, what a left hand by Lewis. Tucker trying to fight back. Tucker trying to fight back. He just doesn't have it in his body to come back with. He's just sitting waiting for the assault. Boy, look at that right hand by Lennox. Just as Tucker in the last round started to get some offense together, it appeared as if Lewis set a trap. And it worked perfectly. Tucker may have sped himself as Lewis came back at the end of that eighth round. Well, now Lennox Lewis has got to worry about wearing himself out because this is still round nine. Tucker is just barely there by just a thread. So Lennox Lewis has tried manfully to get him down. Let's see if he can finish this. Plenty of time for Lennox Lewis to do the job. Lewis looking for that one punch to end it. Lewis now showing a few few signs of fatigue, holding him with one hand and trying to bang him, but Tucker can't keep him off. Now taunting, smiling at Tucker. He's buying time. He hasn't got that much left either. He's got to wait till those juices start coming back into his muscles so he can punch. Tony, Tony is just kind of waiting for the salt, just listening to that seconds tick by on the clock, hoping to get past. Oh, two nice little shots. Does Tucker have it in the reserve to come back? A nice right hand and hook, but is Lennox Lewis setting another trap? He you is. can't tell. This he could is. be a very, very cagey, inexperienced champion. He's setting his trap, but it's kind of stupid when you got a big guy there that can bang you. He's just kind of letting him take a shot, which is kind of dumb. Of course, that's how he got him in trouble the last time. Let him get brave and then punch his head off. Interesting because Tucker's saying he's the one with the experience. Tucker with a right cross. There's nothing on Tucker's punches, though. Nothing. And then a low blow by Tucker. At least it's heating up into a good heavyweight championship fight with both men trying to get the, the advantage rather than that chess game we were watching. Lennox Lewis is looking to load up on one right hand. That's it. There's the hook. That's what he's looking for, Bobby. Just that one zipping punch that'll, that'll change him around, turn his legs to jelly. He's sitting on it, too. You can see him. He's starting to lean back, starting to cock it. He's looking to take that right over the top. And right now, he's risking taking right hands. Back comes Tucker. But Lewis again taunting. That is it for the ninth round. Give Tucker credit for guts. Now, listen. Take them out. Listen. This whole round, you're going to stay outside and use your jab. Nothing but the jab. Jab, jab, jab. All right? Get your, get your shit back together. Give me that goddamn one. This round, you'll stay outside and you'll use the jab. You got me? Use the jab on me. Come on. Give me the jab this round. Give me the jab. Give that face. Stay with the left jab. Got it? Jab down. Get your shit on. Towel. Like yeah, hey, look here. I told you if he started fucking the towel, right? Do that. Don't be macho now. Yeah, send him back up again with the jab. Go back to your yeah. Great. Good. All right, let's watch these two rallies. You know, I think Lennox made a mistake in, in letting this. Oh, this is the, the knockdown. Wasn't a mistake. But the rest of that round, he just let him come on. Let him come on. Let him come on for no reason at all. Well, he used a lot of energy, and he may very well have used up more than he needed to. And again, we have a big man.
weighing 235 pounds. Hard to get out of there. Well, Pepe Cordero apparently has his worries because he's at this round just jabbing. Instead of saying, hey, go in there and finish this guy off, you just let him off the hook. He just said, just keep jabbing him. Apparently, he's very happy that he's way ahead and happy to take a decision. Lennox Lewis has ventured into the 10th round only once in his career. So these are somewhat uncharted waters for the man in red, the well, champion. We've been waiting for Tucker to make his move, his do or die move he said he was going to make, and he sure made it that last round. He sucked it up from someplace because he was in deep trouble, and he came on and he was punishing the champion toward the end of that round. So you've got to give Tony a lot of credit for that round. Lennox Lewis right now does not appear to be the fresher of the two, believe it or not. He seems to be a little weak, a little tentative himself, and Tucker knows he's so far behind he has to close now. Has Lennox Lewis let this one out of his grasp? Well, it can't be out of his grasp. He's so far ahead. No, I don't mean it that I, way. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, uh, Cordero, Cordero it has told him to just jab, and this is apparently a very disciplined fighter. He does what the corner tells him. That's exactly what he's doing. Move and jab. That's all he told him to do. That's what he's doing. I, don't, I wouldn't agree with that, but hey, I mean, he, maybe he's willing to waste around that way. There's a right hand by Tucker. That's what I meant. Lewis in danger. At times of going down in the heavyweight division more than any other, one punch can do it. Yeah, I, I don't think you want to change what got you there. I mean, once you're already beating the other guy and you're beating him well, you start being cautious. Now look at this. Look at the attack by Tony Tucker. That's what I'm talking about. Once again, you see Lennox Lewis now getting hit much more than he had earlier. Maybe that energy is real important at this point. Again, uncharted territories after this round. He's backing Lewis up. Lewis comes back with a right. Tony Tucker with more confidence. Something we talked about earlier with experience. He hasn't been in the late rounds, and he loaded up with every shot when he had Tucker hurt, instead of some combinations and landing the big one late. Tucker feels that at times Lewis makes amateur mistakes. The inexperience really works against Lennox Lewis. Let's see if it comes to fruition. Well, Tony is sucking it up. He wants his championship. He's coming after it. He's taking a good little beating, and he's still there, and he's still dangerous, is Tony Tucker. Notice who's going forward now and who's going backwards. Momentum swung a little bit. Tony Tucker on the attack. We approach 20 seconds left of the 10th round. The crowd getting behind the underdog, Tony Tucker. Be interesting to see what Cordero has to tell him now. That advice cost him around. Final seconds of round number 10. this rally by Tucker this tired old man that's out there trying to win a heavyweight championship and boy he's giving it a go now you can't take back everything you said in those first four or five rounds or six rounds because he's summoning up every little bit of courage he's got he's coming for Bobby I admire Tony Tucker for his fight. had he done more of that earlier we might have had a closer fight it may be too late it's too late according to points but it's never too late in boxing as you well know Bobby it's never too late if he gets cautious, if Lennox Lewis gets cautious, try to coast, boy, it's big problems. He's got to take command again. It's pretty obvious what Tony Tucker needs here. He's been to the canvas on two occasions. Knocked down for the first time in his career. But Tony Tucker coming on stronger later here in the fight. Running into a right hand and a left hook. Again, he's coming in, but Lennox Lewis seems to be slightly revived. Well, I think that's what they did. They took that round off, and they said, okay, go back to the attack. Because he was getting weary, and he, he blew that round, but he rested. Yeah, Lewis might have a second win here now in the 11. Whatever it is, Tony Tucker's made it a fight all of a sudden, instead of that waltz we were watching, and that's the excitement that we're seeing here. Tony's trying with all his heart to get this championship off Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis has never been to the 11th round. 
So you talk about uncharted waters, and again, we harken back to the two judges from Great Britain if this goes to the cards. That's what Tony Tucker should have been doing. They didn't land much, but boy, the breeze foam was hurting uh, Lennox Lewis. At least he's punching four and five at a time. That's what he's got to do. He's got to take command. This title is there. Maybe Tony thought about putting on a late comeback because, again, this man, the champion, had not been in championship rounds, and Tony has. Yeah, but Tony's getting old, too, Bobby, and he hadn't had a, a peaceful life. Remember, he's had a pretty strange and wild life, so you don't figure he's going to be strong at the end. You figure the young man's going to be strong at the end. Tucker's been to the 11th round four times with a record of three and one. But Tucker bouncing back after the drug problems, managerial problems, all kinds of personal problems. Two year layoff, 14 and 0, 10 knockouts since the layoff. He did question the caliber of opponents though during that comeback. But this is his chance to redeem himself, to win the title. Lennox boxing well, boxing well this time. He's, he's gotten his shots. He's, he's made uh, Tony Tucker miss because he's trying so hard. And he's just not landing. He's just not following in like he did before. Lewis slipping. His foot went right out of the ring yeah. down to a knee. Uh, no punches landed, just one of those things. But that, again, is something you can also attribute to fatigue, not paying attention, not being sharp about where his feet are. Final 30 seconds of round 11. Now's when Tony's got to take command if he's going to take this this uh, round. He's got to come in close. He's got to try it. He's only got 30 seconds. Burst of energy here would do it. Can he summon up the energy? Well, apparently not. He's not coming up with what he needs. is not that big, you know, it's Ladies like a and foot. Gentlemen, we're approaching the 12th and He's never been this far in a fight in his life. The fatigue factor has to be playing some part in it. And Pepe Correa launching the new Rockney speech at Lennox Lewis. He said, you've led him back to the fight. Don't forget, this is Don King country. Yeah. Round 12 as they touch gloves. It's that's Don about King. as plain as it can be. It's Don King country with two English judges. I think that's a neutral. I mean, they neutralize each other. It's sure that Tony Tucker said at the outset that that doesn't trouble him. Isn't that somewhat of an oxymoron? <laughs> What's it called? Lennox Lewis trying to hold on to the championship. Tony Tucker trying to take it away. Tucker needing a knockout. He's not fighting with a great deal of, of authority as uh, Lennox. I mean, his punches aren't hard. They're, they're, they're first and they're landing some, but not, not what he did before. And Tucker's not coming forward, not, not deciding this is the last round. He's going to end up on the canvas or he's going to end up champion. He's not deciding that. He's still cautious. Even though Lennox Lewis is the champion, and by most expert opinions, obviously by the odds, the better fighter, that experience that Tony Tucker's had earlier in his career may be helping him right now. Well, he's certainly got this huge record. I mean, he's got talent. He's got size. And uh, all, he, all he lacked was the aggressiveness. From time to time, he showed the aggressions that would have made him a good champion had he had it with consistency. He's been inconsistent. That's the word for his life. If only he fought earlier in this fight the way he did later on. Tony Tucker could have been a different story. Well, right now, Lennox Lewis is looking like he's already uh, folded up the tent and he's uh, headed back to England with the, with the title. He's certainly not anxious about the, the crowd is reflecting the uh, yeah, inactivity of the round. How could this be with a heavyweight champion? In the, in the air, how could a guy not be fighting like crazy with Tony Tucker? Why isn't he coming forward? Fatigue? Well, I think Lewis also thinks he's got this fight wrapped up because he made a comment to Pepe Correa, like, what are you talking about? I let him back in the fight in the corner. And 
Let the career want him to stay on target, stay in line with what he's doing, stay focused. And right now he's just breathing, figuring he's got it locked up. And no matter what happens, somewhat of a moral victory, a personal victory for Tony Tucker, just hanging around here for 12. Bobby, I wasn't talking about Lennox Lewis not fighting. I was talking about TNT Tucker not fighting. If, if he's that far behind, he should be running across like he did before and mixing it up and getting it going because this is the last round. He's, he's, he's saving it for nothing here. Well, he's been on the floor, and he should know he's behind. I can't see him doing anything but hanging all up. I agree with you. Lennox Lewis glances over at his corner. He justified his title shot, I'll say that. He fought hard. He went down twice. He got up fighting. But he is not exhibiting what you need to be the heavyweight champion, which is aggressiveness and the desire to get in there and get it no matter what. Against Riddick Bowe, you're saying this wouldn't cut it? Oh, it would not with Riddick Bowe. Off of this, I don't think Lennox increased his uh, popularity a great deal. Or his stock. No. Final seconds of the fight. There it is. That is it. Lennox Lewis raising his hands in triumph. And he put the Tucker to the canvas two times. Tucker came back, but perhaps too late. So now it goes to the judges' scorecards. You heard Pepe Correa saying to Lennox Lewis, you let Tony Tucker back in the fight. This is Don King country. But as we pointed out, perhaps to offset the situation, the two judges from England, Harry Gibbs and Mickey Van. The other judge from Las Vegas is Jerry Roy. I just noticed in the corner, Tony Tucker went back to the corner and said, I lost it, huh? I lost it. And I think he feels in his heart that he didn't give quite enough. He didn't have quite enough to close it. And Lennox Lewis, again, an inexperienced champion in his first championship fight, showing that even late, he too was having trouble. And disappointing because if Tony Tucker had opened it up a little more and shown more offense in the earlier rounds, Bobby, he would have had a better shot here for the decision. Yeah, but the flip side of that coin is if he opened up there and Lennox Lewis was able to withstand, would he have enough to then stay in the fight while Lennox Lewis came on? So it's uh, very difficult to say, but Monday morning quarterbacks are always 100% on the money. That's why we're here. And Lennox Lewis showing the British flag. Let's take a look at the knockdowns in the fight. We pick it up in round number three. Lennox Lewis lowering the boom on Tony Tucker. Well, this set the pace for Lennox Lewis and what he was going to use for the rest of the fight. The right hand, that was his key. That was what he wanted to do. He wanted to land that right hand. And here, when he knows he can, he forces it. And at some points in time, he forced it so much that Pepe Correa got mad at him. He was going right hand crazy. That's another look at it from a different angle. It was very quick and on the money. He probably never saw it. And then in round nine, Bob. Well, in round nine, you know, they're both tired. He's coming off being pummeled a little bit in round eight. He's a little more fatigued, as is Lennox Lewis, but the punches now are landing solid. He's just trying to hold them off, putting his hands out, but he's getting hit. Gets one on top of the head, down to the knees. And a frustrated look on the face of Tony Tucker. One more time, you see him, he's working forward, being the aggressor. He's got him in trouble, whipping big shots. And part of the thing that got him tired was each one of these shots was trying to send him through the building, on top of the head, finally, down to his knees. We are set for the official decision. Our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Mickey Van scores the bout 118-111. Jerry Roth scores the bout 117-111. Judge Harry Gibbs scores the bout 116 to 112. All three in favor of the winner and still heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. So there you have it, Lennox Lewis in his first offense. 
Unanimous decision over Tony Tucker Lewis now 23 and 0. And Tony Tucker falls to 48 and 2. I the thought scores the scores were extremely, extremely, I mean, they were very fair. I had it 117 11. It was 117 11, 118 11, and 116 12. That's all within the, uh, within the points. It's, uh, I thought that was a very fair decision. A couple of knockdowns by Lennox Lewis contributing to the loss for Tony Tucker. Our fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, is standing by in the ring with post fight reaction. Doc? All right, a little confusing up here because there's a lot of people, but the fight, was it ex as uh, exciting as you thought it was going to be? I tell you, you got to give Tony Tucker enough respect because he's got a great chin, he's got guts. If that was Riddick Bowe, Riddick Bowe would have been down on the ground. But Tony Tucker, he realized that this was his last chance and I have to give him all the credit in the world. Didn't you think it could have been a lot more action after you got him down? It seemed like you took a round off. You just jabbed. I heard your corner say just jab, and you that's know, what you did. The funny thing, I got a cramp like in the fifth round, and I was trying to work it out before I started combinations. But, uh, you know, I, I, I just spots a smart fight and just came out with You were satisfied with your performance? I wasn't satisfied. I can always do better. But uh, I did it for my mother for Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Well, Ed, you, yeah. you can say happy Mother's Day. Yeah, happy Mother's Day, Mom. Uh, all right, and for uh, all the people in England, I suppose. Happy yes, Mother's Day as well. thanks for it. Happy Mother's Day to everybody in, in Great Britain and everybody in Canada, everybody in Jamaica, everybody in the United States. That pretty well covers the world. And in Mexico. Wait a minute. What about Australia? We left out. Tony, you did very well. This is your last hurrah, apparently, because you, you, got, you sucked it up. You almost pulled it off there in one round, but you went down twice. Uh, what, what went through your mind when you were down? You think you could get up and finish? Oh, I knew I was gonna get up and finish, you know. I just, you know, you know, fell asleep, got in there and got lazy and careless, and um, he caught me with a good shot. Lynn's a good fighter, you know, but I can't make no excuses, you know. But I, but I would say that, you know, so I had some, some mishaps, you know, in doing my training, and, and uh, I got sick, you know, and I had to pull out for you know, a few days. I think that might have, you know, pulled me back a little bit. But uh, Lynn's a good fighter, you know, but this ain't over for me, you know, this ain't, but I ain't lost but twice. I lost to a good fighter, but I'll be back. You know, it ain't over for me yet. Tony, I, I, we kept saying, what's holding him back the last round? Last round looked like you two guys were in a waltz contest when you had it in your hands if you wanted to go get it. Why didn't you go get it in that last round? Well, you know, I, 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 I was, you know, coming at him, but, you know, I was just off. I was off today, you know, today. You know, I, I just couldn't put it together. You know, it just, you know, I just couldn't put it together, you know. You know, sometimes, you know, you know, I asked the Lord to give me this victory, but sometimes, you know, he pulled back and said, man, just wait a little while, you know. And so, you know, I'm not taking this in, in a downfall and, and saying, you know, my career is over because I still got a promising career. I, I, I think I put on a great fight. I could have put on a better fight, but uh, you win some, you lose some. I happen to lose this time. You know, Lennox was a better man today. All right. There was no problem with who won the fight. It was how he won the fight. I thought we had a great night of fighting today, Don, to recap. Julian Jackson went down for the first time in his life in a blazing fight, and uh, and Julius Cesar Chavez proved what he is, the best pound for pound, and this wasn't the greatest heavyweight fight of all time, but it did not prove that Lennox is the best heavyweight around. He certainly didn't. I think the judges rule, what, and I accepted but uh, Lennox did a, a great fight. He fought very good. Tony was lazy, wasn't getting off. If he got off, it may have been different. I thought Tony would win hands down. So they certainly proved me wrong. So congratulations to Lennox Lewis, a great champion. I'm very happy to see him do his job like he did his job. And that's what makes a great night of boxing. Now to put on a promoter's hat, we had an excellent show. We got a show that's so much different from all the other shows that the people pay their money to see. We guarantee customer satisfaction. We give them affordable prices, and we give them three for one. That's a more bang for their buck. So I'm very happy about the show. Julian Jackson and Gerald McQuillan proved to be just what we said it would be, a bond burner. And it was really an exciting show. And as you said, Julio Cesar Chavez, the inimitable and incomparable Chavez, is moving on toward Pernell Whitaker in San Antonio I, on September 10th. I think that's what makes audience appeal, that you continue to build fighters and that you continue to build toward a very major fight with Pernell Whitaker, maybe the best fight of the year building up here. That could be the end of Julio Cesar Chavez. It could be that he's the best that there is. We won't know till that takes place. That's a great one to come up with. It certainly is. And we got some great shows coming up on Showtime Championship Boxing. As you know, we have Terry Norris. Terry Norris will be fighting Troy. Water sometime in June, and we're going to have uh, Maurice Blocker fighting Felix Trinidad from Puerto Rico for the 147 welterweight IBF championship. So we got great shows, and then we got Tony, as you know, we won in the first bid against Daryl Van Horn. He'll be fighting in July, and we also have Michael Nunn on the same card, so these two guys can keep eyeing themselves. Are you, are you, looking, 
Are you telling me I'm not going on a vacation this summer? Oh, I'm just no, going to work no, all summer long. We're going to keep working, man. Right. continue to be number one Showtime Championship Boxing. Let's the go, greatest. Let's go to Steve Albert at ringside for a wrap.